A few people have asked for some more advanced tips on editing. Now, playing the lute and recording the lute particularly um, is tricky. It's a fickle instrument to play, as we all know, and the tiniest misalignment results in splats and buzzes and wrong notes and things like this. But I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that you can use to improve your recorded performance using editing. And I'm going to show you two different types of editing. First of all, we're going to cheat the sync and the second method is proper editing. Now what do I mean by cheating the sync? What we call sync is the synchronicity between the pictures and the sound and what I'm going to do is cheat the synchronicity. So I'm going to take the sound from one recording and cheat it under the pictures of another recording. So where I've made a mistake or a splat I'm going to make a little cut. I'm going to just nip in a bit of sound from a good take and hopefully no one will notice. Uh, it doesn't work every time, so I'm going to teach you another method, which is a proper edit. Now, with video, in order to make an edit, unlike a, an audio edit that you can do if you're making a CD recording, for example, where you can edit until the cows come home and, and hopefully no one will hear the, hear the um, joins. With video, obviously, you can see where an edit's made, and you sometimes can't cheat the sync, and people won't be fooled. And so in order to make an edit, what you're going to need is two different shots. And in order to make the cut work, they need to be different sized shots. And the reason for that is that if you have the same composition and frame and try and edit between one take and another take, you're going to notice the join and you're going to see a jump in the picture. But first, let's have a look at cheating the sync. So, with the caveat that I'm definitely not an international recording artist of uh, renown or repute, I have uh, recorded myself playing um, a little piece that we've probably all played, Christ ist erstanden, um, which is a good beginner's piece of Judenkönig, um, and I've played it through a few times in this, um, in this take, and I'm going to show you how you might edit to fix a mistake by cheating the sync. And obviously with this tiny piece, the advice would be just re-record it until you get it right. But obviously in a long piece, if you've played something and you've got an unfortunate splat or a wrong note, um, then it might be a good technique for fixing little problems. So let's just have a look at what I've recorded here. Hang on, that's not how it goes. Uh, you can hear I've made a mistake, a deliberate mistake, which actually was quite hard to do because I'm so well trained, but um, there's, a, there's a wrong note there. So we're going to go and have a look and see if I can fix that wrong note from another take using an edit that cheats the synchronicity of the pictures and the sound. So let's um, find where that mistake was. There for sure. So I'm going to leave the playhead where it is and zoom in. Now you can see on the waveform that these lumps represent each chord. Here we go. And that's the offending chord. Now I'm using iMovie but you could use whatever software you have to hand and they all work in the same way. You have the pictures on one track and the audio on another track and in iMovie by default they are joined together so first of all what we're going to do is detach the audio from the pictures by right clicking and going to detach audio and there you've now got the audio and the pictures separately some other uh, software will automatically default to having the audio and pictures separately it just depends on what you're using so what I'm going to do is just snip out this offending wrong note so I'm going to use my blade tool to just snip and snip either side of the wrong note which I can see because it's a hump in the in the um, in the music in the waveform so I'm now just going to delete that because I know that it's a wrong note and it's going to leave me a little hole which I'm going to fill with the right note I hope which I've recorded in a different take so let's just have a look at another take so here's another take and here's the first part and here's the second part of the second phrase so I'm just going to put the, the laid in there, the playhead. So that's okay, it's a bit fast though. Let's have an, I did another take, which is probably a bit more right at tempo. That sounds better. Okay, and there's the 
the bit that we're wanting to replace. So I can do that by ear and by eye, by using my ears to hear and my eyes to see the waveform. I'm now going to zoom in. Now, I'm pretty sure it's this one I want here. So I'm going to put the blade either side of this. Whoops, I've done the pictures this time, an easy mistake to make, so I'll undo that. Select the wave, select the audio. Put the blade in either side. I'm now going to zoom out. I'm just going to lift and shift this note over here and drop it in its little hole. And it's trying to put it into other tracks there, but I want it all on the same track, so I'm just moving the mouse until it's there. There it is, and now I'll zoom in. I'm just going to listen over this edit now. So I've made a classic mistake there, deliberately, which is that I've got the wrong note. So I'm going to undo back to that and then get the right note. There we go. And again, selecting the wrong thing. So selecting the audio track, putting the blade in either side. And that shows that you just use a bit of trial and error. And everything's reversible. So I'm going to pick up that note and pop it. There, there we go. And now I'll listen over. And I'm quite happy with that. That's right now. So I'm going to zoom in. And what I'm going to do, just so you don't get any dropouts in the audio, is just adjust the edit points here using these sliders. I mean, it's be the same on most software, just to make sure that they abut nicely. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that if we watch now, it's going to work. It's going to work with the pictures and with the sound. I mean, I think you'd have to be pretty um, forensic to notice and hear the difference. I'd suggest that you check your edits on headphones because you'll really hear if there are any clunks or clashes or anything wrong with it. But on the whole, that's a really uh, good way of doing an edit and that's called cheating the sync. So if you can't cheat the sync, and you often can't because the tempo might be wrong or there might be a reverberation issue or a tuning issue or all sorts of reasons why it might not work, you might have to do a proper edit. And in order to do a proper edit, you're going to need two picture sources. Now, this could be the same camera where you take different shot sizes in different takes, but you'd need to have an external microphone to record the audio separately in that case. In this case, I've used my computer for one shot. This is this familiar shot here. And my phone for another shot. And I've filmed them simultaneously, so I've got two shots of the same material. Now, the major difference with this is the sound is going to be different. So I can't just drop in bits from this recording. Into this recording. Because they were recorded under different conditions. And this is probably going to be the case no matter how you do this. Because if you do contort yourself using one device into different shot sizes, you're going to find that if the microphone's joined to the camera, that you're going to have a different sort of sound. So you need to have different takes with the same sound conditions like I have over here, in, as I showed you previously when I was cheating the sync, and different shots. They're in a different shot size. So first of all, what I'm going to do is align up these shots, this closer shot, over this wide shot. And it's the same method that I used in a previous video where I'm going to just synchronize the two using the waveform. So I'm going to pick this up, lift and shift it over here, and I'm going to find the beginning of the waveform and adjust it so that they're in sync. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to help you see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm probably going to trim the, the start of that so I've got a bit more to play with and then just use my eyes to line that up. I'll zoom in a bit further. Let's just play that, that's about right. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. In sync. So I'll d ditch the sound on the phone for now because I don't need that. So I'll mute that. And there are various ways of muting it depending on what software you're using. And so now I've got two synchronous shots all using the same sound, which is the sound from my computer. So let's find the offending bit that I where my mistake is. So now instead of doing a sneaky drop-in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the entire phrase. Now you couldn't do this probably with the cheating the sync method because the phrase is too long and you'll eventually come out with yourself and you'll obviously see the difference in tempi. So what I'm going to do is is get rid of this phrase and replace it with the same phrase in a different take and I'm going to take the synchronous shots from take two to cover the joins. So here's take one with the mistake. I'm now going to cut out either side of the phrase so there's a cut on one side of the phrase And then I'll put another cut on the other side of the phrase, just here. And I'm going to cut the other pictures as well at the same point, like that. Now I'm just going to delete those because I know they're no good. Now iMovie automatically joins things together. Other video editing software doesn't, but this one does. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to find a take, which I'm going to call take two, which I like. This is this take two. Great, so I'm going to do the same edits in take two on the same the same points of the phrase. So using my blade tool, I'm just going to chop both bits there and there, and then just here and just here. Then I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to shift these into the hole made earlier like that. Now let's listen over and check it works. So that works fine for me. Now what I'm going to do is edit the pictures. So I've edited the sound first, now I'm going to edit the pictures and I'm going to delete this uh, close-up shot either side here and now what's going to happen is that we're going to go from a wide shot to a closer shot and the close shot's going to cover the edit that we've done. Now, my recordings of loop music are never going to be perfect, but that's definitely an improvement. And if you've recorded a really long piece that you're happy with apart from one bar, that gives you the methods that you can use to try and fix those dastardly little mistakes that are the plague of all loop players. I hope you found this helpful.